a very warm welcome to those who have joined us for our service today whether it's now or via our YouTube channel you're most welcome wherever you are in the world and we pray God's blessing on you this day and if we can have our next slide please thank you as we come to our opening prayer as we come into his presence this morning wherever we may be let us take a deep breath and look around us and see what God is saying to us and perhaps what he is calling us to do or to be some of it may be the mundane the quiet the everyday some of it may be taking care of ourselves our relationships with others our relationship with God let us spend time with him this morning in worship in seeking his forgiveness in listening to his voice allow God to guide us out of our busyness out of a day of many distractions and focus on what he wants from us Amen and as we come to confess please say together the words that are in bold for times when we have deliberately done things which we know we have you have forbidden Lord we are sorry please forgive us for times when we knew the right thing to do but decided not to do it Lord we are sorry please forgive us for times when the situation was so difficult that we could barely help doing wrong Lord we are sorry please forgive us for times when our words and actions have hurt those who love us Lord we are sorry please forgive us for times when we simply haven't put much effort into following you Lord we are sorry please forgive us and so may the Almighty and merciful Lord grant you pardon and forgiveness of all your sins time for amendment of life and the grace and strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And we come now to our time of worship. Thank you, Gary, as Gary leads us in these two songs. Thank you, Stephen. Now we're going to start with Who Can Know. Who can know the mind of our Creator? Who can speak a wonder yet unseen? Who can reach the height of understanding? To play the notes of wisdom's melody? Who has weighed the dust of every mountain? Who has walked the mysteries of the deep? Who has laid the earth on its foundation? Who conducts the waves upon the sea? I stand in awe of you. I 
by standing all of you so glorious and true I stand in awe I stand in awe you have seen the end from the beginning you have been before the world began you have reached to me within the darkness and in the light of mercy now I see I stand in awe of you I stand in awe of you so glorious and true I stand in awe I stand in awe I stand in awe of you. I stand in awe of you. So glorious and true. I stand in awe. I stand in awe. I stand in awe. Let's do this uh, If faith can move the mountains, bear with me one second. Faith can move the mountain, let the mountains move. We come with expectation, waiting here for you. Waiting here for you. You're the Lord of our creation. Still you know my heart, you're the author of salvation, you loved us from the start. Waiting here for you, with our hands lifted high in prayer, and it's you. We adore, sing him hallelujah. We didn't hear for you. You are everything you promised. Faithfulness is true. Ain't in the present. All we need is you. Waiting here for you. With our hands lifted high in prayer. And it's you. We adore singing that. Hallelujah, singing hallelujah. Waiting here for you with our hands lifted high in praise, and it's you. We adore, we're singing hallelujah, singing hallelujah, 
singing hallelujah. We're singing hallelujah. Waiting here for you with our hands lifted high in praise and it's you we adore singing high hallelujah waiting here for you Tasha, if we can just hold that slide, if we can just go back to that slide. Thank you. Gary, bless you. Thank you. And I just want us just to wait just for a second as we wait here for you, for our Lord. Thanks, Gary. Just for a moment or so, just waiting here for you. Encouraging you, maybe just lift your hands as it says, as the picture shows, just lifting our hands high in praise, which you, that we adore, we sing hallelujah, God be praised, praise be to God. Gary, bless you. Lord, as we wait here. Gary, thanks so much. Thank you, Natasha. And as we move on now to our reading that Neil's going to bring to us. Thank you, Neil. And then we'll go into our talk that Sarah is bringing to us as well. Sarah, thank you. The first reading today is Romans chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we now rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. The second reading is Romans 6, verses 11 to 23. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer the parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer the parts of your body to him as instruments of righteousness. For sin shall not be your master because you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law but under grace? By no means. Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone to obey him as slaves, you are slaves to the one whom you obey, whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, 
or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that though, though you used to be slaves to sin, you wholeheartedly obeyed the form of teaching to which you were entrusted. You have been set free from sin and, and have become slaves to righteousness. I put this in human terms because you are weak in your natural selves. Just as you used to offer the parts of your body in slavery to impurity and to ever increasing wickedness, so now offer them in slavery to righteousness leading to holiness. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things you are you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be, Thanks to, be to God. Thanks. Let's pray. Father, we ask, would you open our hearts and minds to hear you? As we seek you and seek to worship you and serve you. Amen. You can have the first slide, please. Well, in some ways, this is an easy passage to understand. And then in others, I think it's really heavy. But one of the key places, I think, for us to begin is that first part that Neil read to us um, from Romans 5, what I was talking about two weeks ago. Therefore, since we've been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we've gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. You and I are no longer at war with God. Because of what Jesus has done, we have peace with God and we can come in and go out. We're not living in hostility with God. And as a result, we stand in grace. We have the next slide. We stand in grace, in freedom, able to receive good things from God. This is our starting point. These are the givens that we live in peace with God and we stand in God's grace. And then Paul goes on in this part of chapter six to explain and encourage us that we shouldn't be going back to live in the old ways. He uses the image of slavery, an image of their everyday life that he says will help them. Well, in our society today in Britain, we're not living with slavery as a main factor, although I know that it still goes on and that its impact is still felt over generations. But the image could also be thought of as two households. One where you're renting with others, the other where you're a family member. And if the image doesn't work for you, and some of you may not like it at all, please ignore it, but I hope there will be enough that will help. So if we can have the first, the next slide. Please. Will one of those go? It's not going to go back anyway. OK, we'll start with Paul's explanation. We have two options under law on the left hand side or under the rental household. Your master is sin. He is your slave owner, or your master is you've got to keep on paying the rent with a very hard landlord. Sin or missing the law's expectations is what sets the expectations. The rent is set, you know the things that you've got to do. But the wages are death, you'll always have more to pay. 
wages of sin, you're never going to be good enough. That's under the rental household, under the law. Whereas under grace, or God's household, the master is God, but he's a master of love and not of legalism. You may, may remember last week James saying that God gives us royal robes. And then we're given a heart change so that we can obey from our heart, which leads to righteousness and holiness, and the gift, not wages, our eternal life. We don't have anything to pay, but our behaviour changes. We can have the next slide. Just the first bit of it, please, Natasha. Oh, okay. When we come to Christ, we change household. And you can't live in two homes at once. This isn't about us having a second home on the coast. But when we come to God, we're moved into a new household. From that place of no trespassing of legalism and law, not quite yet. Okay, thank you. We moved and we stand in grace and we have peace with God. Most social groups, families have rules or understandings of what behaviour is expected and how you get what you want, how you belong. In the legalistic one, you know what you've got to do or else you know what you've got to try and meet. We learn what they are, they form us, whether it's how emotions are expressed, what jobs are expected, what language is used, whether rules are made to be broken or kept. And when we move to a new household, we find there are different expectations. There are other things that are on offer. You can grow into a different way of being. You find that there is a swimming pool that there are things that you can enjoy that you don't have to pay extra for. The next slide, Natasha, please. And it's the same with what happens to us when we come to God. We move from that place under the law where we will always be caught out by sin, where there's always more to do, more things that you can and can't do, to the place where we're at peace with God, where we're welcomed, accepted, and have freedom. That doesn't mean though, that we don't have things to do. It doesn't mean to say that we bring all the old in, but God gives us a new way of being. You can have the next part, please. God gives us a change of heart. Verse 17, thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, You've come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. Knowing peace with God, God changes our hearts so that we obey from the inside. That image that we have of, we still know that we need to do the good things, the things that the law pointed out to us. But God in putting a change of heart there and his heart there, means that we're able to do it so much more easily. It's done from a place of love rather than law. As slaves, we have to obey the master because we have to. With God, it's done through love because the relationship has changed. The motives are, are different. It's love rather than servitude. We're all on a journey with this and Paul is exalting the Christians then and now to recognise that we're in a different place with a different master. The next slide again, please. We don't always find it easy to follow God's new ways. There are times when we realise that we've imported the stuff from the old life, the things that we used to do there, that we're doing what was normal then but it doesn't mean that we're still living in the old house. Some habits die easily. Others take much longer. But as we live and stand in grace, we have God's help. We live with the master, God, who wants to help us. Whereas under law, there was no one to help. And I found this comment from one of the commentators really helpful. The law demanded obedience, 
Grace supplies the power to obey. Grace breaks the mastery of sin as the law could not. The law demanded obedience. Grace supplies the power to obey. Grace breaks the mastery of sin as the law could not. And the next slide. Our call is to obedience is not another call to work hard and earn salvation. It's a call to walk more closely with God. It's a call to find out what the new expectations are in this household of grace. We offer ourselves to God. Yes, there will be times when we need to work hard. It's not about sitting back and relaxing as though everything is done. We're called to follow God's teaching, but also to recognize we're living in a new place. The expectations and house rules are different. We're no longer under judgment. We're set free from the old law of sin and death. We reap the benefit of holiness and receive the gift of eternal life. We're to enjoy life with him, knowing his peace and his grace and keeping on leaving the old ways at the door. Let's pray. Lord, help us to recognize that you give us the power and the strength to obey you in a way that is all about love and nothing about law and legalism. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sarah. Bless you. And Vicky is now going to bring us our prayers and the Lord's Prayer. Thanks, Vicky. Let us now come into our Father's presence with thanksgiving and be glad in him. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us as we wait on him. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. When I say God of love, please feel free to respond, hear our prayer. We pray for the life of our church. We pray for wisdom and discernment for Sarah, our vicar, and the PCC as they continue to look to how we will be able to unlock our church building whilst keeping everybody safe. We thank you, Lord, and praise you for the way that you have sustained us and drawn us together as a vibrant, worshipping and praying community, despite not being able to leave our homes and meet together. In particular, we thank you, Lord, for the way that we have been able to worship you in such an inclusive way. And we pray that as we go forward, that whatever form church takes in this time of COVID recovery and new normal, that we can retain that spirit of inclusivity. God of love, hear our prayer. We pray for the world and those suffering in extreme poverty. We lift to you, Lord, the millions around the world who may still get very ill from coronavirus and have no access to the health care they need. For those living in rural villages who might have to walk miles just to get to the nearest clinic. For places where vital health equipment is scarce such as in South Sudan, with only four ventilators for a population of 11 million people. We pray for strength, wisdom and protection for the healthcare workers in those places and for organisations such as Tear Fund and Samaritan's Purse, as well as our own overseas mission partners like Beryl Baker and Sarah and William Babumba ministering in countries such as these as they seek to bring hope and care to those in need. God of love, hear our prayer. We pray for the communities around us. As the pubs and restaurants start to reopen, we pray for a spirit of order, self-control and community awareness. 
We pray for wisdom and strength of character for the publicans and restaurateurs as to how best to open their doors, so that an, an enjoyable time, as well as a safe time, can be had by all. We also think of those communities in strife. We pray for those caught up in the recent terror attack in Reading and those who have suffered through the traumatic deaths which occurred there. May the church and the Christians in that community be anointed by your Holy Spirit to have a powerful ministry of presence as they seek to be your heart, hands and feet, shining a light for you and reaching out to those who are in the grip of grief and trauma. God of love, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are unwell and struggling in body, mind and spirit in our church. Particularly mindful for those in hospital at this time and those who are undergoing treatment and for those who are shielding. Help them, Lord, to trust you, that they are not forgotten, that you know them by name, that you know and understand how deep is their suffering. Help them, Lord, to trust that you can give them the strength and courage for each new day, and to believe that you are a loving God who heals. Come, Creator Spirit, source of all life. Sustain us when our hearts are heavy and our wells have run dry. Regard with compassion and mercy and give hope to the crushed in spirit, helping them to see your mercies and blessings each new day. God of love, hear our prayer. We continue to pray about the unrest caused by the killing of George Floyd. Moreover, we turn our hearts and prayers to be with everyone who has been discriminated against. Spirit of peace, fall on places of conflict around the world. Heal divisions and hurts. Spirit of justice, Anoint decision makers with wisdom to bring about systemic change and truth where cycles of poverty and bias have taken root. And come Holy Spirit now and show us as Christians what our response should be individually and as a church. God of love, hear our prayer. O oh God, maker of heaven and earth, you saved us in the water of baptism, and by the suffering of your Son, you have set us free. Help us to put our trust in his victory, and to know the salvation won for us by Jesus Christ our Lord. In the name of Jesus, Father God, mercifully hear our prayers. Let us now pray for the coming of God's kingdom in the words our Saviour taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Vicky. Bless you. Of the sovereign Lord is upon This is the year of the Lord. Take us to the river Take us there in unity to sing The song of your salvation 
to win this generation for our song of your forgiveness. For it is with grace that never flows. Take us to the river and the city of our God. Take us to your throne. Give us ears to hear the cry of him. For that cry is mercy. Mercy to the fallen son of man. For mercy in this triumph. Triumph on the job by your blood. Take us to your throne and the sin of our God. By the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon us. This is the year of the Lord. By the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon us. This is the year of the Lord. Take us to the mouth. us in the shadow of your hands with the sure mighty angel who sides the strand the ocean and the land for in his hand your mercy the shallows on a dry and barren oh take us to the mountain in the city of our God, by the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon us. This is the year of the Lord. By the Spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon us. This is the year of the Lord. First verse. Take us to the river. Take us there in unity to sing a song of your salvation. To win this generation for our King, a song of your forgiveness, barring in the grace that river flows. Take us to the river in the city of our God. Take us to the river in the city about God. Amen. Amen. Gary, thank you so much. Bless you. Thank you so much. And as we come to our closing prayer now, please say Amen with me at the end. I said to the man who stood at the gate, Give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, Go out into the darkness and put your hand into the hand of God. That shall be to you better than light and safer than a known way. May that almighty hand guide and uphold us all. Amen.
just before we go to coffee and breakout groups. Special thank you. Thank you, Natasha. Bless you. Thank you. For